In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform propensity score matching using a genetic algorithm. Now, uh, the advantage of using a genetic algorithm for propensity score matching is that it can actually match all the propensity score, but also as, as well as the covariance directly. And if there is a situation where it's not possible to estimate the propensity score, um, you can just match on the covariance. Now, this example is part of chapter five of my book, Practical Propensity Score Methods Using R. And um, I am going over an, an example of estimating the average treatment effect of mothers having a job that provides or subsidized childcare or the length that they breastfeed their children. So for this example, I already loaded the data sets uh, and ran the genetic matching in advance. And the reason for that is that uh, it's a, genetic matching is a complex algorithm and in my computer it takes about 20 minutes to, to run. Now, um, so the code starts with loading the data and um, you need um, all the covariates um, as well as um, the propensity score and um, a list of names of the variables. And this is already loaded in the R environment here. Um, now, I'm using the matching package, which implements genetic matching. Um, the genetic matching implementation is um, a generalization of the mahal nobis distance matching. Um, so it will try to match on propensity scoring covariates if you provide covariates, uh, but calculating weights to, so it's a weighted mahav nobis distance. Um, now, um, because I want here to match all the propensity score and the covariates themselves, I will create a data set uh, called covariate data where I start here with putting the propensity scores in the data sets, but then I add the covariates, but I have to make all of them numeric. So I have some several covariates that are factors, um, and I use the here as numerics as matrix to make them all numeric. Um, so for, for binary covariates that were previously factors, now they will just be zero, one. And um, I also, because of the, the way the matching package was set up, it also requires that the treatment is a large covariable, so it's a true-false variable. So here, the treatment is child care. I am converting it using if-else from zero, one to true or false. Now, so the genetic matching goes in two steps. Uh, the step that takes the longest is using the function gen match to calculate the weights based on genetic matching for, uh, for each uh, of the variables in the data set. So um, here, and, and it's trying to optimize on the quality of match, so here my uh, fit function is p vowels, which means it's trying to um, obtain weights for the matches that will get the largest p values for the difference between uh, treatment and control of each covariate. Now, you usually don't want to use p values as a measure of covariate balance. Uh, but here, since it's for just optimization, uh, it's not for the final evaluation of covariate balance, it's okay. The final evaluation of covariate balance, we use standardized effect sizes instead. Now, um, so here I have, um, in the gen match function, I call my treatment, which child care, covariate X is, the, is an argument to provide the data for the covariates, where I have a propensity scores and all the covariates. Population size is an argument for the genetic algorithm. Uh, fit function is what I'm trying to optimize, which is here, p-values. 
So I'm trying to maximize the p-values. Um, so make, um, in other words, I'm trying to make the difference between the number control not statistically significant. Uh, the estimator is ATT, average treatment by factor treated. And here I'm doing matching with replacement and allowing ties. So because I allow ties, this is actually not one to one matching, this is one to many matching. Um, because if there are multiple matches, they are all included. Okay, and and I will have a case weights here because since I'm using replacement ties, um, I'll get weights that account for individuals being used more than once as matches. Okay, so once I run the gem match to calculate the weights, the matching, the actual match is done with the match function of the matching package. Um, and, and match function also gives me, calculates the treatment effect for me. So I, I have to provide here the outcome, um, which is the ratio that the child breastfed, uh, the treatment, the covariant data, uh, the matrix of weights, which comes from the previous function gem match, estimate and matches one, um, so one to one matching with replacement allowing ties. Okay. Once that is done, I can uh, obtain the covariant balance with the match balance uh, function providing here as the match out algorithm, the previous previous object that I created, the matching, and I provide the propensity score formula just to declare which covariance I'm using. Um, and I'm, I'm going to evaluate covert balance based on, on standardized mean differences. So I say the KS is close false. So I'm not evaluating it based on the Komogorov's Milov test. And I'm not evaluating it based on the paired samples T test. I mean, those are significance tests and it's not, it's not a good practice to evaluate covert balance based on significance tests because the larger your sample size, the harder to find that the balance is actually adequate because it will increase power. And also because covariant balance is a property of the sample. So differential statistics like the Paris sample state test are not appropriate for evaluating covariant balance. Okay. Now to get the, so matching balance will, will print to the screen, but to get the actual uh, standardized differences out, I have to use a list. Um, and, and I also, they provide standardized G difference multiplied by 100. Uh, so a difference of 0 0.05 standard deviations becomes a, a five. So because that's not common we, in papers, I divide it by 100. So here in the summary, I would take the these are nice differences from the previous object. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you the object. So here, uh, these are all the standardized mean differences. And um, they seem pretty small for each covariant. Um, and I am just running a summary to understand, get a view how large these are. Um, so running. So I get that the maximum standardized difference is uh, 0.16. So the adequacy of this depends on which cutoff I'm using. If I'm using the educational research, we use a lot of the What Works Clearinghouse of the US Department of Education. And for that, the cutoff is either 0.05 with no additional adjustment for covariates or 0.25 with additional adjustment of covariates. So by the 0.25, Subdivisions criteria, this here is adequate. So all covariates were less than 0.25. Now another criteria is 0.1 that's used more in medicine. It was suggested by Austin. So if I use the 0.1 criteria, I have six covariates that exceed 0.1. Now, and to get the average treatment effect, I just call a summary of the genetic matching object. And I have here that the average treatment effect was 2.9, p-value is 
Now, if I want uh, to do additional bias adjustment, so um, bias adjustment is a doubly robust estimate, estimate to when that you actually use the covariance E, the outcome model, uh, that's easily done with the match package, but by just uh, doing rerunning the match, but adding this argument here, bias, bias adjustment equals true. So uh, I can rerun that, and with bias adjustment, I get a slightly different, but very similar uh, treatment effect. So it went from 2.92 to 2.82, is still not statistically significant, so the conclusion didn't change. Now, if I want to do a sensitivity analysis using uh, the Ococcal Science Ranks test, I can use the library R bounds for that and the p sense function. So here I'm calling the genetic matching object. Gamma is my sensitivity parameter. A gamma of one means no confounding, and I can increase the confounding up to three. So it's like theoretical, you know, how strong the confounder has to be to change the result. So I'm checking up to three, and I'm increasing gamma from one to three increments of 0.1. So when I run that, And a gamma, it's the difference in, in, in odds between the treatment and the control uh, in, um, with respect to a meter co-founder. So here, the, if the gamma is one, which means there is no meter co-founder, uh, the p-value is 0 0.0458. Now, note said that this p-value is significant, and it's different from what we obtained with the Abadir EBIS estimator. So that's a, a limitation of this sensitivity analysis method, is that if this test is significant will, with a non-parametric method, the wink side rank test, so it's different from what we used before, uh, which was the Abadir EBIS uh, estimator. So with the wink side rank test, is actually statistically significant, but it's very sensitive to omitted confounders because as you can see, as you increase gamma to just 1.1, then the upper bound crosses into no significant, a no significant range here, right? So, so these results, even though the Wilcox Society Rex test, assuming no co-founders was statistically significant, it is very sensitive to an omitted co-founder. So this is how you run the genetic matching using the matching package ER.